Uh, guys, so uh, I'm here with a new project today, an exciting project for my territory, SZ. So today I'm going to put these uh, aftermarket LED lights on my territory. So you can follow the exact same procedure if you don't have a bull bar or a nudge bar and you want to fill these, uh, you want to put these aftermarket lights, how are you going to do that? What would be an appropriate uh, position to put them? And uh, what would be an easy way to do that? So first of all, the reason I wanted these were that uh, uh, I have trouble uh, seeing in the dark and uh, these are road legal, advertised as road legal, their pattern is elliptical, they shouldn't be uh, actually uh, penetrating the oncomer's uh, eyes. So I bought a pair of these, uh, let me show you how they're going to look like. So note that uh, you have to buy LEDs as a separate pair and the wiring harness is separate. So this is how the end connectivity will look like, there are two cables. Each of these LEDs uh, have two termination points, red goes to red, black goes to black. So the winding will go back uh, and uh, it will end up with a relay. And uh, from relay, this is uh, relay is powered by uh, a direct connection to battery or any direct feed from battery. And there is a, uh, a fuse in series. So this setup goes and then there is a jumper in between and then we have the end switch. So the reason for this jumper is you can put the, put the strip separately and then use the jumper to connect the wiring. So this portion will most probably inside the cabin and uh, from this, this portion, this portion will go from inside the cabin to out in the engine bay. This will be somewhere near the battery and, and these cables will be routed toward the LED lights. So now, how, sh how can we do this on, uh, in here in the engine bay? So as a first step, you want to take this uh, cover out, take this cover out, there are a few clips here and there. So just remove these clips and this whole thing you can take off. Uh, I think that I've pointed out these two places, uh, this or this. So if I put lower then the pilot trend won't be too good. So the highest place that I can get is this one. I won't be putting it right in front, I'll go in the back so that it has the ability to maneuver up and down if I want to change the pattern. And one will go here, and the other one will go here. Uh, this thing can be removed. Uh, to remove it, just uh, put your hand behind it, and there is a clip. Just pull it down and out. So it's not too difficult. There's one clip unlocked. There is another one here. Another one unlocked. And similarly, we must have a third one here. Yeah, third one is locked. So I'll just go ahead, uh, try to look for most, more of these clips and I'll remove them uh, one by one. And then I'll show you what I do. All right, now I've uh, removed all the retainer clips. So this thing was just stuck here. So just pull it straight up and it will come out easily. So just make sure that these are, these are clips at the bottom. Try not to break them. So you just have to uh, pull it straight up. It should be okay. If, uh, if you have trouble, you can try to lift it from here and see from uh, here that if you can lodge any of those clips that are hurting the way. So in the meanwhile, I'll remove all the top clips and the bottom clips. You can see, but there are now two clips, one here and one over there that are holding this front grill in its place. So to show you what how to remove those two last clips, let's have a look. So you see that clip over there, just try to push it outwards really, really, really high and this thing should come out. Actually, used to, I actually have to use uh, the full uh, space for my hand to push it out. So I'll do that now. So just try to pull on outwards, uh, outward knob like this and it comes out. So yeah, what you're trying to do is that push this thing out. And uh, once you put some force on it really hard, then this thing will automatically pop out. Now, once you've removed this one, you can have a look at the last remaining thing. Uh, you can see it from here. So you have to remove it in the same way that you removed the right one. So here's the grill. I was able to take it out. So there are four clips at the top, four at the bottom, and two on the sides. So just have a closer look at these clips. Uh, you need to push these clips out before you are able to remove this grill. So after removing the grill, I, uh, I ended up with two more problems. Uh, the first problem is that I cannot use the grill, uh, grill mounting or grill uh, 
this uh, protrubings, uh, plastic protrubings at the back to mount my LEDs because they are really flimsy. And uh, with this flimsy plastic, the best if it's uh, flimsy, it will be <clears throat> my LEDs will end up uh, vibrating on highways. This is not what I want. Second problem is that uh, these LEDs, uh, they do not come with any marking that shows that uh, which side is up or which way is down. So I ended up uh, uh, peeling some of its wires and connecting it with 12 volt dedicated battery to see what kind of pattern does it throw. And then I marked this thing up which shows me that this is the top side. So if I install it like this, it will have a very straight horizontal line below which the line, line the light will spread and above which the light will cut off. So now that I know this, uh, the, uh, the first problem that I encountered, encounter, I thought that probably instead of mounting it down on uh, the grill, I should mount it up. So there are a couple of places in the car where we can use that. So if you look from underneath here, this is a sturdy plastic base, very, very rock solid. So I was thinking that probably something here, straight bake or somewhere in the middle, I can just uh, drill a hole here and uh, here. But then I realized that uh, there is another problem here. I will not have enough room to work if I have this plastic pipe. So this is a turbocharged air pipe. Uh, I'll probably loosen it so that I can get some space to work around. So there are a couple of holes. One over here. And if you look at the back, um, down bottom, there's another uh, bolt over there. I can loosen these two screws and uh, then I'll just uh, remove probably this end and then see if I have enough room to uh, put a drill or something, a tool in between. Probably a Dremel tool will work over here, drill a hole here. And after that I'll show you how it looks like. So I removed the pipe and put some cloth in there. I've already made a hole over here. And on the other end, not only I made a hole, but I put a light in. Uh, the one I, uh, I did it first because I, since there was a lot more space on the left side and uh, I just want, on the right side, and I just wanted to make sure that the steps that I'm gonna uh, do on the right uh, did not take too many tries. So for you can see that there are some space here in between the ceiling and uh, among the top of the light, and this is so that I can tilt it later on up and down if I just want to adjust my um, horizontal cutoff line. Uh, now on the right side what I'll do is that uh, I'll just take uh, a nut and uh, a spanner. I'll just put it behind here and then I'll try to uh, put this from the bottom and uh, I'll try to tighten up using using this uh, concoction that I have. So hopefully once this is in then I'll put the light in and I'll show you. Alright, uh, now I have this bracket installed. I'll just go ahead and uh, pop these nuts in here and uh, put this light uh, over here and just use it. You can rotate it and there's plenty of uh, room here to move it around and fix it in its place. So let's see how it goes. All right, uh, both my LEDs are in and all I need to do is to wire them up. So to wire them up, I have the harness I just shown you earlier in the video. So the longer end, I'm gonna use it with the left hand side and the shorter end with the right hand side. Uh, this is because um, my battery is on the left, so the rest of the, left, uh, rest, rest of the stuff is on the left, so what I'll do is this, I'll just uh, start with the right side. I'll just put it over here, and the short end here, and then I'll just uh, wire it up to the back, and I'll show you how to uh, bring it inside the cabin. Uh, I've finished putting up the wires in, so let me show you guys how I did it. How I did it. So from the fuse, the red goes directly to this one. I checked it. We do get a direct power from here. Uh, it's connected to the directly port battery terminal. For the ground, I connected the black one to uh, this uh, negative terminal of the battery. Um, also, the other one, uh, mm, the relay, I put it bolted it down here under the ground of uh, the car. So yeah, it, the relay is now grounded. Apart from that, uh, instead of using the same ground for this negative, I just took it from the battery terminal. So these are the connections here. I then routed this cable onto the right and onto the two uh, LED wirings. So the first one is here and the second one is over here. And then, then I neatly uh, put some cable ties on it and made sure that the routing is clean. Um, I could have done it uh, under that one, but uh, really doesn't matter. Uh, I'll first have a run with it and if I need it, I'll just put it down under here to make it uh, furthermore invisible. But we are gonna put a, 
uh, a plastic top on that there will be a cover here so that this won't be visible uh, next I routed the wire from the other wire that goes inside that starts from here from the relay I routed it up from under the uh, under this uh, uh, fuse box under the coolant and it goes all the way from over here to the inside of that uh, grout so this one was a bit tricky part on how to put it through it so first of all i made a small uh, hole with the drill it was really easy uh, you can just if you don't have a drill you can just choose a, a straight head or a, or a phillips screwdriver so then i used this driver to try to pull the wire through but uh, it didn't work so then i just uh, took this peeling i had this peeling it came off another cable it's an opening in there so what i did was that i took the other end of the wire put it in here and put a tape around it so that it doesn't slip and then uh, using this flat head i just pushed this end through and then once this end was the other the other end i just pulled it uh, from the inside and the cable came in but before I was able to do that i had to remove the connector the connector from the cable terminals i used these uh, connector keys uh, to remove and uh, dislodge the cables from the connector just like we have one over here at the other end uh, i removed it from this one so that the cable this way because uh, this thing is a uh, quite uh, uh, big in size so it was difficult to go over there so i had to remove the cable so it's not really tricky you just have to spend uh, probably five minutes with it so let's see what we have here so in the inside we have these cables like this so all we need to do is that uh, put this thing back with it and uh, put the put the switch over here i'm thinking of putting a hole somewhere here and then we'll i'll just uh, route it the cable over here in the switch and then it will be visible because i don't have any other place which i think would be appropriate that thing is our airbag this is the fuse uh, fuse box cover so this looks like an appropriate place to do it or maybe here uh, anyways I'll just see and then see how it goes all right this is how it looks uh, from the inside totally clean no wires no nothing no junk and um, here you can see the engine bay no extra wires that you can see running off anywhere everything it comes in goes down from here so from the front you won't be able to see those leds it's just a subtle uh, uh, subtle aid to the detail apart from that there is nothing in there so the next i would just wait for the night to fall and then we'll uh, try to align uh, align these leds so that uh, they can be driven on road all right that's the moment of truth now let's switch on the leds and see how they perform well, I can definitely see that um, they are lower than the low beams so they are not gonna cause any problem from the on for the oncomers so it should be okay and uh, my road is a lot more lit than uh, uh, what it originally was without these uh, without these uh, LEDs I think that in the future I might go ahead and replace these LEDs with something more powerful if I need to but for now uh, it looks like they are going to serve the purpose. Thank you very much.